Hello everyone, here's another video uh, in the Inventor Analysis series and uh, this time uh, we will be performing a regular stress analysis on an Inventor part. Earlier we had seen an uh, analysis on an assembly file, this time we'll be looking at a simple part. So I have with me a flanged pipe. So in this uh, scenario what we'll be doing is we will not be applying any uh, force or any momentum or any bearing load in this case we will be applying a pressure load okay and let's have a look at how we can work through with the pressure uh, conditions so in a part environment finding the stress analysis environment is very very simple one is you can go to inventor uh, uh, in the ribbons you can come to environments tab or in the 3D model tab itself, on the top right hand side corner of the ribbon, you will have something called as begin stress analysis. Easiest way, simple, simple same here as well. So create a study, keep the same name or if you would like to change it, please feel free. And once that is done, like I've always said in the earlier video as well, either you can start from the ribbon from the left to the right or in the browser from the top to the bottom. Whichever is more convenient for you, you can go ahead for that. In this case, I'll start off with applying material as cast iron. And I'll apply fixed constraints. Both my flanges will be fixed. So I will be uh, applying fixed constraints on both the faces of the flanges. Now for the pressure load. Now we have uh, two options. Okay, one is we can apply varying pressures on different faces that you want or if you want a uniform pressure throughout all you have to do is automatic face chain so once you select automatic face chain and select any one of the interior faces you will notice that all the faces get selected now how does it happen uh, in the back end it understands that they are in contact either tangentially or uh, in terms of uh, smooth g2 surfaces as well Okay. In this case, I'll just apply uh, 100 MPa of uh, pressure. Uh, it may be a little intense, but let's just see how it goes. Apply, my, apply the pressure as well. Okay. And then again, coming to our contacts. So very simple. We will stick to. We will still stick to automatic contacts itself. And probably with a better example, we'll look at how manual contacts work. So in this case, since it's a single part, there are no uh, contacts that will be detected. So you can proceed. Mesh view, you can click on the mesh view and see what the mesh view uh, you are getting it. If you would want to edit it, you want a more refined mesh, you can always come down here, uh, change the element size to as per your uh, requirement. And then you can just update the mesh in the browser and it will be updated. Again, since we have come from the top on the ribbon from the left to right, we are near about coming to the simulate option. You can use the S as a shortcut or you can type click on simulate in the ribbon. Okay, So it's a simple study, it shouldn't take much time. And there you go, we have our static stress analysis. Okay, In this case, we have applied a pressure. Let's have a look at how it's impacted on the component. So of course I told you last time as well, uh, the results are always exaggerated just to get an idea of how the loads have been acted on the component. So if you want an actual deformation, you will see there's barely anything. So just for the visual confirmation, we can just get it into adjusted into 0.5. So here you will notice up front that uh, near the flanges, there is some bulging, right? So that is the major area that we find internally. Also, if you notice, uh, you will find some major stresses that are acting at the bend. Okay. So since it's a 90 degree bend, of course, there will be some uh, stresses acting at the uh, bend. If it were to be, uh, say, a 60 degree bend or a 45 degree bend, I think, you know, it would be much more smoother. So coming to displacement, uh, I'm sure everybody is aware uh, various results are obtained in inventor stress analysis, one vices, first principle, third principle, safety factor and so on. So uh, one of the key factors that everyone looks into is displacement. So let's have a look at uh, how the displacement, what is the effect of the pressure in displacement. So as of now, if you notice, we have 0.3078 mm of deflection. 
and again uh, it's very very evident that it is in the area of the bend so uh, we can go ahead we can manipulate we can change the designs if required now there's another alternative that i have just created uh, what we can do is we can just click on finish analysis just to study the impact of a uh, couple of design features let's see how it works so i have created a rib in the part okay a simple 5 mm uh, rib i have not uh, taken measurements and done it just a simple rib i have constructed just to see the effect of how what a supporting structure like a rib or a gusset plate can do again we'll get into the stress analysis environment here uh, we don't have to go through the hassle of doing it step by step all you have to do is right click on the existing study and copy study that's it so all your materials your constraints loads everything will be automatically applied the contacts is something that you can uh, update since there's an extra body here again we can go ahead mesh it so if you are satisfied with the mesh element size you can continue and now let's again simulate this simple study shouldn't take much time and here we have it in this now let's come to displacement if you notice here the displacement is 0.2941 not much of a difference but still uh, if you would uh, come down to uh, in the micron level of accuracy that you need so you know it still matters a lot so earlier it was 0.3078 mm right now it is 0.2941 so with a little bit more of uh, design features added to this maybe you can add some more gusset plates onto the left side on the bottom and on the top side uh, on the right side so if you could add more gusset plates i'm sure it would uh, give better strength as well so uh, in this way uh, we can apply pressure and understand how pressure has an impact on a particular component and i'm sure everybody is aware uh, who has viewed my earlier video about uh, the feature of a report i'm sure everyone is aware so you can just continue saving it give it your name uh, report title where you want to save it format i would like to select a rich text format we also have html and mhtml so once you click on that you could if there's an existing report it would ask you to overwrite it uh, in this case it's asking me to overwrite so i would uh, save it Uh, I'll take this time to uh, request all of you to subscribe to my channel, uh, share the videos. It should help a lot of people, and also hit the bell icon for uh, future notifications as well. And uh, I am making it uh, uh, a point to make these videos more frequent so that there's no gap in the learning curve. So uh, the report should be uh, done any second now, and then we'll see how uh, what are the outputs. now uh, i would like to point out that uh, we have done two studies performed two studies right so uh, inventor is very smart very intelligent so what it does is if you see the report you will notice that both the analysis both the studies are there uh, it the results will be populated so when you are coming down to a comparative study it makes things much easier right so if you see here this is static analysis 1 and if you come down scroll down you will find static analysis too as well so like i had said earlier as well it gives you screenshots of multiple views uh, in terms of, of of about where we have added constraints loads where is the maximum stress acting maximum uh, strain that is being uh, performed on the part so all of these values we can pick up from these screenshots and the best part is we can directly copy these images put them on to your custom reports and have a team meeting and discuss the same on them so i hope uh, this is of great help uh, with this i would like to end this particular video uh, stay tuned for more videos thank you so much